On today's video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 best places to live in Tennessee. A lot of people think that Tennessee is a paradise of affordability. However, on today's video, we're not just going to show you what the best places to live in Tennessee are. We're going to give you a wake up call to the reality of living in Tennessee. So before we talk about what the best places to live in this state are, let's first understand exactly what Tennessee is. Tennessee has the second highest percentage of the population dying from overdoses. Only West Virginia has a worse drug problem than Tennessee. So if you're moving to Tennessee, you're definitely not getting safety. In fact, the homicide rate for the entire state of Tennessee is higher than the city of Los Angeles, the city of San Francisco, and the city of Miami. The largest city in Tennessee, Nashville, has a homicide rate that's higher than Oakland, California. So if you think Tennessee is safe, I don't know who's been spreading this misinformation, but when people think about Tennessee, they think it's safe and affordable. It is neither one, because even on the real estate side, new construction in Chattanooga, Tennessee will cost you as much as new construction in South Florida, except for in South Florida, you're getting a concrete block building. An OSB plywood house in the Chattanooga area is currently selling for more than a concrete block house in Florida. But Tennessee's incomes are actually less than Florida's. Tennessee's incomes are the 41st lowest of any state. So the notion of affordability and easier, more affordable living doesn't always check out, at least for the middle class. Now, if you're talking about within the realm of affordability, then there are more affordable options in Tennessee. But it's more affordable because there's more crime and it's less desirable. We're not even gonna talk about Memphis, Tennessee. This corner of Tennessee has some of the highest homicide rates in the entire country. On the west side of the state, the African American community is dying from homicide. And on the east side of the state, the white population is dying from overdoses. The good part of the state is what we call middle 10, the center part of the state around Nashville, the largest metropolitan area. On today's video, we're not even gonna get into the western part of the state near Memphis because Memphis has consistently been the third most homicide-ridden city in the entire country now for decades. In the outskirts of Memphis on the side of Arkansas, there are rural counties where the homicide rate is over 100 per 100,000, putting it on par with places like Salvador, or Honduras, the most dangerous countries in the world. Some years back, Tennessee was considered the second most crime-ridden state in the entire country. So the notion that people had when they moved to Tennessee that it was this affordable and safe place to live really does not check out statistically. Since after all, you're more likely to be murdered in Nashville, Tennessee than you are to be murdered in Oakland, California. Overall, the homicide rate for the entire state of Tennessee is double the homicide rate for the state of California, as well as the firearm mortality rate in Tennessee is 22 per 100,000, meaning that firearm discharge deaths are very high in this state. So where people got the notion that Tennessee was a good place to move to, I have no idea who spread this garbage, but people flocked to Tennessee thinking that it was a better place to live than California. It isn't by income, it isn't by drug consumption, it isn't by safety, it isn't even by life expectancy. Now Tennessee isn't as bad as the ugly seven, you know, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kentucky, you know, the states that are always the worst at everything but surprisingly Tennessee isn't too far behind in all those categories overall when you combine all the metrics of health the life expectancy in Tennessee is the seventh lowest in the United States so overall it's really not the type of place you want to end up but a lot of people are moving to Tennessee interestingly enough despite having all of those bad categories Tennessee is the 28th state by home prices which means that, like I said, it really isn't that affordable. And if you're looking for new construction, you're actually going to pay more than a state like Florida. And the building you're buying will be, well, not as well built. So I really don't understand the incentive of moving to Tennessee for affordability. 
Not only is housing more affordable in Texas, but the homicide rate is about half and the amount of people dying from overdoses is a third of that of Tennessee. So again, what you pay for in Tennessee versus what you actually get isn't as great of a deal as people think they're getting. I think a lot of people that left states like California were just believing some type of mainstream media rhetoric and they really failed to do the research but let's get into this let's take a look at the top 10 best places to live in the beautiful state of tennessee the beautiful dangerous and drug ridden state of tennessee number one is franklin tennessee a suburb just south of nashville very affluent place beautiful homes rolling countryside this is really where you want to end up if you're moving to tennessee it's geographically right in the center of the state and it puts you within close proximity to nashville this is a safe and fast growing suburban area that has beautiful places to shop lots of new home construction spacious properties large homes if you move into tennessee and you have a fairly decent budget this is probably where you want to end up. And it's not too far away from the GM plants in Spring Hill, just to the south. Without a doubt, if you're moving to Tennessee, this is the first area you should look at. Number two is Chattanooga, known as having some of the fastest internet speeds anywhere in the United States. Chattanooga has really grown for the better. It has a beautiful scenic setting. It is in the Appalachian Mountains. There's a beautiful river that cuts right through the town. The downtown is pretty and the suburbs are great as well. The beautiful thing about Chattanooga is that the city limits are expansive. You can end up on the outskirts of town in a beautiful suburban rural setting and still be within city limits. And that is an advantage that many other cities do not offer. Whether you're on the north side of the river or the south side of the river, there's a lot of great options in Chattanooga and it really is a great place to live. My only complaint about Chattanooga is that the city core is somewhat old, decrepit, and it has inherited a lot of problems from the past older neighborhoods with higher crime rates. And the cost of new home construction in Chattanooga, given the natural resources that are plentiful here, does not make sense. I think the new home construction here is massively overvalued, especially considering the building materials, how accessible those materials are because of the geographical location. It seems like the at least new home construction prices here simply do not make sense. But without a doubt, it still remains a great place to live. I would steer clear of the urban core of the city and end up somewhere in the outskirts. But overall, the vibes and atmosphere of Chattanooga are really great, and you should enjoy moving to the city. It's a great option. However, when you compare the prices to other places like in Florida where you end up on the beach, then you'll realize that it's really not great of a bargain. But if this is the type of natural setting you're looking for, it's a great option.
Number three is Murfreesboro. Now, this is a suburb to the southeast of Nashville. It has good access to the interstate. It makes it a very central place to be. It's always been kind of like a small town, but at this point, Nashville has grown so much that it feels like it's part of the urban core. So it's a nice town right on the outskirts. It's big enough to have everything you're going to need. The downtown even has a few Latin restaurants, like the ones you'd see in South Florida. So at least there, there are a lot of things to do in Murfreesboro. This is definitely one town that you should consider if you're moving to Tennessee. And again, the prices are not going to be the most affordable because you're part of the Nashville metropolitan area. But it is a great place to end up. And that's really the thing about Tennessee, that a lot of the best places to live really are not that affordable. And don't even think about commuting into Nashville from here. Traffic north to south on these suburbs of Nashville is as bad as Miami or New York City. It really is a hectic lifestyle. Number four is Brentwood. Now, this is a suburb to the south of Nashville. And the advantage that you have here is that it's a lot closer to the city core, which means that your commute will not be as hectic. Again, it's a beautiful, scenic, fast-growing suburb, very safe and nice. The name Brentwood carries a prestige about it. It's a very nice, fancy area. And if you can afford to live here, then you're probably better than the people who live in these other crappy suburbs like Laverne and their police department with all their embarrassing things. These things would never happen in Brentwood. One of the great things about living in Middle Tennessee is that you have almost perfect weather. The rotation of the seasons here are almost perfect, so if you enjoy a change in weather, then Middle Tennessee is definitely where you wanna be. Number five is Sevierville, Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg area. This charming town on the mountains offers you easy access to some of the greatest attractions that the Appalachian Mountains have to offer. Dolly Parton's hometown, this beautiful scenic area, will give you the opportunity to find what you're looking for when you think about Tennessee. We're talking mountain living. We're talking quiet, peaceful, serene places. The people in this part of Tennessee are warm, friendly, and kind. Where southern hospitality has pretty much been eliminated from much of the deep south, it really still does exist in this part of Tennessee. And the area is a major tourist destination, which means that if you're moving from another state, your family most likely at some point want to visit you because the attractions will be a great excuse. Economically, this isn't the stronghold of Tennessee. It's like being in Nashville where the economy is strong. Out here, there's less jobs, but there's definitely more natural beauty. Number six is Knoxville, Tennessee. Disclaimer, you want to be in the outskirts of Knoxville. Please believe you do not want to end up in the urban core. Again, you're going to enjoy the beautiful natural settings of the Tennessee mountains. Knoxville is more affordable than other parts of the state, but this state is plagued with opiates, and this is the epicenter of it. You really want to be careful to end up definitely in the outskirts, and even some of the inner suburbs are going to have visible homelessness. Despite the fact that these are great people out here, they have a huge struggle. And Knoxville is an affordable town, but it's definitely not a town that has a lot to offer. Incomes are low, crime is high, addiction is rampant, and there's really a lot of bad things that this area is dealing with. Despite all that, it still considers itself to be one of the places people want to move to in Tennessee. Despite the area's natural beauty, I personally wouldn't want to end up anywhere in the city core here. Even areas that look decent are plagued with homelessness, addiction. This area has a lot of problems, but despite all that, if you can find the right place in the outskirts, I'm sure you can find something that works for you. Tennessee has a lot of problems, and even cities on their best places to live are going to have some serious drawbacks. And unfortunately for Knoxville, it hasn't just been now after covid this area has been dealing with this problem for decades now, and it doesn't seem to be getting better. Tennessee is, again, the number two state in the whole country. Only West Virginia has a bigger problem.
Number seven, Nashville. Home prices here are skyrocketing at an incredible rate. And that is because Nashville is a very fun city. It's actually the only fun city in the whole Mid-South. It's like a Las Vegas. The growth here has been tremendous. The skyline has been reshaped and old decrepit neighborhoods have been gentrified. Nashville really is a success story despite its ridiculously high crime rate. Nashville is more dangerous than Oakland, California, but that really hasn't prevented people from California to move to Nashville. That's not an oxymoron. I don't know what is. But at the end of the day, Nashville is like a Las Vegas, a Miami, or a New York. It's been growing. It's a fun city. You could be there at 3 in the morning, and it's absolutely packed with people having a freaking awesome time. It's a fun city. Nashville is the capital of the South. Culturally, its identity is strong. It's a city that has a lot of culture, arts, and things to do, an entertaining place to live. Much of the South is dead. Here, Southern culture is the only place in America where it's actually alive. Montgomery is dead. Atlanta is dead. Memphis, don't even talk about it. But when you talk about Nashville, this is Southern culture. This is the capital of the South. Despite the fact that crime is rampant in Nashville, it is still half the homicide rate of Cincinnati and Indianapolis. So when you compare it to a city like Indianapolis, Cincinnati, or Louisville, or any other cities in this region, then you start to understand that it's actually safer than those cities. But let's not ignore the fact that it's still more dangerous than Oakland, California. If you're looking for a fun city to live in in the South, something like Las Vegas or Miami or New York, Nashville is definitely it. Neighborhoods are growing. The city is actually a fun place to be. And without a doubt, traffic congestion is a nightmare and the cost is not affordable. But if you're looking for something in the South where you still get that real Southern culture, Nashville is definitely it. And again, a culture that's dying everywhere except for in Nashville. In recent years, you're starting to see a lot more Cuban, Colombian, Venezuelan. So if you're coming from a more diverse part of the country, you can still get access to that good cuisine that you have back home. And that is important for a lot of people that are relocating. I guess the city's biggest drive is that while the South is dying, it's growing. And Nashville's not backwards like these other places. Okay, it's not like Montgomery or Memphis or all these disgusting cities in the South that can't get their crap together. Nashville is still a diverse city. You have country culture, but you don't have this well, there's no nice way of saying hostile approach to outsiders. It's a welcoming, warm city, yet its own culture is still overpowering that of the migrant communities, which is usually not the case. A lot of these cities in the South are afraid of Latinos because the Latino culture overpowers their blandness. But Nashville is so confident in its identity that it's not afraid of these outside influences coming into the city. Look at the fact how Nashville pretty much merged with Atlanta culture and now country music has kind of swallowed up Atlanta. And that is something that Nashville has done. It's embraced any trend that comes along and made it better and without losing its identity. We can say if it wasn't for Nashville, country music and Southern culture would just about be dead in the United States. And it's done it while embracing other cultures and other nationalities and even under other genres of music. Like pretty much we can say that Tennessee's starting to swallow up Atlanta now. It's really a culture hub and the American identity thriving where it's dying everywhere else. Sure, you might get stabbed outside of a nightclub, but the person doing it will have their country outfit on point. A lot of people may not care about the cultural aspect of a city when they're moving to it, but there's cities like Austin that people flock to for a culture that pretty much is artificial. Nashville is authentic. But a lot of people are shying away from Nashville because of the high cost to buy properties there. Number eight is Tazewell, Tennessee. Just a small little town in the middle of nowhere with some of the most breathtaking natural settings you're going to see anywhere. Nice, warm, welcoming people. There really isn't anything special about that town except for the fact it's freaking gorgeous. If you're thinking about that dream little small town in the middle of nowhere with mountains and just beautiful settings... Taswell might be it. It's somewhat geographically isolated, but if you're looking for a small town, maybe you want to buy a bunch of land and just start a buffalo farm or a miniature Cebu cow farm somewhere, this is probably the place to do it. 
If you're looking for a small town with a lot of potential, this is definitely it. They have a Walmart and they have a few places you can get a job in this town. It's not completely nothing out there, but it's enough nothing to make it worthwhile if that's what you're looking for. Number nine is Shelbyville, Tennessee. It's only one hour south of Nashville in theory if there's no traffic. This is another great small town. It's got a beautiful, cute little downtown, beautiful natural settings in the outskirts. Has a little bit of new home construction if that's what you're looking for. Has a little bit of everything. It really is a great option. And despite the fact you're not that far from Nashville, you are far enough to where it actually feels more like a small town. It doesn't have that suburban feel. Definitely, if you're moving to Tennessee, this town needs to be on your radar. Number 10 is Maryville, Tennessee, right outside of Knoxville, surrounded by beautiful mountains. There's nothing really special about Maryville, and maybe that is the beauty of it. Maybe there's just something nice about the fact that there's nothing special about the town. It's a very normal place. If you think about an average American town, Maryville, Tennessee. Maybe that's what makes it great is that there's nothing outstanding about the town. You're close to the mountains, you're close to Knoxville. It really is a very quiet and calm place, and a lot of people are just looking for that. Nothing really steps outside of the ordinary here. Nothing's like a wow factor about this place. It's just an average factor, and for a lot of people, that's exactly what they're looking for. The fact that it's close to Knoxville means that if you need bigger things like malls and shopping, it's not too far away. You're probably wondering why nothing on the western side of Tennessee made our list today, and that's because nothing in the western side of Tennessee is worth a horses. I mean, even the suburbs of Memphis, the absolute nicest suburbs, which they are beautiful in the outskirts, are still near Memphis. Memphis is a dangerous city. I remember I was there after young Dolph got killed, and literally there wasn't a single person or car to be seen in the entire city. It was like literally stepping into a war zone. And well, unfortunately, when you look at the homicide rates of Memphis, that's exactly what it is. And when these gangs go to fighting with each other, the whole town has to hide. I know the city of Memphis can't be proud of these poo shisey looking fools, but at the end of the day, the reality of Memphis is that why would you want to live in the nice side of a horrible place? How about you just live on the nice side of a nice place? So unfortunately, Memphis and the whole western side of Tennessee doesn't make this list. And this town's along the southern side of Tennessee, heading that way as well. Places like Pulaski where the Klan was founded. Are you kidding me? How, those, how do you think those towns are going to make this list? It never ceases to amaze me how people that live in absolutely horrendous places have the nerve to think that where they live is decent. I've stayed in the nice side of Memphis in brand new hotels in the best suburbs and I've been looking out the window hoping my truck wasn't going to get stolen overnight in this nice part of Memphis. So no, you have a lot of problems Memphis and no matter how hard you try to say that there's a good part of Memphis, your mother has a good part of Memphis, but you don't. Problem is, you got these big bear white looking dudes from Memphis who come up in here talk about they live in a nice town, but they can't take their hood rat baby mamas out for an evening in the town because they're afraid of getting shot. It's always some Jim Jones from Dipset looking type dude talking about it's safe in Memphis. I know you ain't gonna come up in here looking like Michael Blackston posting for a family photo looking type dude trying to tell me it's all right in Memphis. It ain't really that bad in the suburbs. If it's so not so bad in the suburbs, then why you look like a homeless version of Barry White? Lick the Cheetos off your hands before you start tapping with your Shesta Sheeta on probation in the suburbs looking dude. Taking a photo next to Diddy looking dude. Shingy, but you couldn't afford the Holiday Inn looking dude. I'm from South Memphis. Black version of little white looking dude. Crunchy black stepping out the sauna looking dude. Juicy J without the blue Bentley looking dude. In the comment section calling me racist looking dude. YT from the dollar store clearance rack looking dude. Dress for less, look like less looking dude. I'ma take my kids to the pyramid looking dude. It's really nice by Graceland looking dude. Getting slapped by the water boy looking dude. Nissan Sentra driving looking dude. Buy a car with a bad transmission looking dude. Bay mama got lice looking dude. Bed bug infestation in your house looking dude. Uh, I'ma be late on the rent looking dude. <laughs>
Thank you.